here we are on the fifth night of Hanukkah as we reflect and enjoy Eight Nights, Eight Jewish Values, Reflections for Hanukkah on the Jewish Obligation to Build a Better World. It's so great to have you all in the living room again. This living room, sturdy and strong and plain, like the builder who made it. Just this one house for all of us. On this fifth night, we turn our thoughts to uniqueness. Sarah Hurwitz says, while human beings often manufacture identical products, according to Jewish tradition, God created each human being to be entirely unique. Whether or not you buy the theology here, you can appreciate the sentiment. There has never been anyone else like us, and there never will be. And we each have a completely unique obligation and con try again. We each have a unique contribution to make to the world. Here, Sarah Hurwitz gives us a gift which is both encouraging and provocative. Our uniqueness is a gift which is precious indeed, but which also comes with responsibilities and obligations and callings uniquely our own. Even as we acknowledge and celebrate our shared humanities, our shared common story, our shared house, our collective path as we walk, still we are at the same time invited to examine and appreciate and live out our individual histories and callings. We are not made in an impersonal factory with one big machine stamping out hundreds of millions of widgets at a time. No, we have been lovingly crafted one by one by one. I think I've talked about this before. Here in this house, in my bedroom, in the hallway, in the kitchen, and oh so very many in the workshop, Mr. Oaks made built-in drawers. They look the same at first glance. All the kitchen drawers look the same, all the hallway drawers look the same, but they're not. <laughs> Each one is just a little bit different from the others. You don't notice till you pull them out to paint them or to clean behind them. And trust me, I learned it the hard way. Then the drawers I only thought I could put back easily and mindlessly became a puzzle of sorts. You have to remember which drawer fits precisely which opening. The differently cut spaces ensure that each drawer has only one cutout which fits. I used to laugh at this lack of standardization and also thought about how many beers he consumed as he worked that sawzall. But now, <clears throat> 20 years later, I see them with a new appreciation. They're bespoke just like the house itself. Each drawer is made by hand, not cut from an impersonal machine. Each made with his daughter, Lucy Shaver, firmly in mind as he cut and nailed and sanded. Now these quirky, singular, individual drawers are mine to steward. Now I see more and more every day, the love in this house that he made for his daughter and her family. And also for a woman, me, who Mr. Oaks never met, but every day I enjoy the fruit of Mr. Oaks' labors. Guess what? We're bespoke too. It's like Mr. Oaks made us each in his workshop. He made the cutout hole slightly different for each of us, and he made a drawer for each of us alone. The cutout holes are our lives. The unique drawers are what is filled with what we amass in each of our lives, which make us who we are. Here at Laysan Race, we come gathered together in Mr. Oak's living room.
for a shared purpose and ethos, one I would like to think that he and his daughter, Lucy May, would endorse were they with us in this living room that he so lovingly built. And he would smile at each and every one of us and marvel at each of our drawers. He would see us, truly see us. And he'd say something like, wait, I remember you. You're the middle drawer on the left in the second bedroom. And you, you're the bottom one by the closet. You were tricky, but I fit you in. What fine drawers you all have become. I made your drawers sturdy so they would hold all of your life. So she come, show me what you did. Show me how you've decorated your drawer. Oh, that one is very elegant. <laughs> I see Evelyn got a little handy with the bedazzler. I like it. What's that? Is that called decoupage? Now, everyone get their drawer and show me how you filled it. This is amazing. I could stay here all day just looking at what you have done with the drawers I made for each of you. But then he'd get serious. Oh my gosh. Somebody is crying. I see your frustration, child, when you are trying to put your drawer away for the day and it doesn't fit. It either rattles around or you just can't get it in the hole. That's because you are the one and only Ling. And Ling's drawer won't fit into the opening, into the life that is really Olongo's. Find your life opening, Ling. I'll give you a hint. It's the one by the window because I know you love the sunset. When Mr. Oaks sees us struggling with our individual drawers, heavy with the accumulated weight of our lives, I imagine at him, I imagine that he's looking at us with kind eyes and stroking our faces with callous yet somehow very gentle hands and saying to us, I built your drawer to be sturdy, Lace, but yours has weight that may no longer be needed. You need to be able to lift your drawer, and I can see your knees buckling from the weight. Can we look at it together? Can we look through it together? Let's see what you keep and what may need to be discarded so that you can carry your drawer with lightness and make room for new treasures. You can tell me the stories of all your things, of all the things that happened, and we will decide if they still serve you. Your life was not intended to be a junk drawer, sweet Christy. What is broken? What has pieces missing? What maybe served you well years ago, decades even, but no longer does? <laughs> Can you not talk about this item just yet? That's okay. That's okay. We'll place it gently in the corner of the drawer until you can. I will be right beside you as you confront your drawer, and I will safeguard it when it goes back into your life opening. I promise. I promise your drawer will hold. And just in case, I always have my tool belt. Oh, here's a gift. Here's a tool belt for you, too. <laughs> My beloveds, everyone has a story which must be acknowledged and honored. The flip of this is everyone has a story which must be faced and confronted and told even if it's to only one other person, even if only to ourselves. Our singular lives live in the words and in the white spaces of our stories. Words upon words and white spaces upon white spaces that find their home in our drawers. There is an alchemy in the telling and hearing of each of our unique stories, 
whether or not these stories are told in kind of a linear, unique narrative fashion, or if instead our individual stories sort of leach out of our pores like a custom-made fragrance. It is this fragrance, born of 10,000 signature scents in the house that Mr. Oaks built that infuses the space that I am privileged to live in every single day. Celebrate your uniqueness and honor the uniqueness of the other. Mr. Oaks is smiling and the candles illuminate the fifth night.